Um, I would like to ask all of you one question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad about that because I wanted to make sure that all of you can understand what we are trying to talk about in today's session. We are talking about uh, building inclusive India, where the theme is nothing is impossible. Now, uh, you have uh, heard you, you have heard so many inspiring examples of people with disabilities. You have heard about Mr. Achieve, about Ryder Carlson, and I'm going to hear so many people. Now, I will talk a little bit about myself. I have got uh, almost 100% here in Austin, in both years. From the time I was born. But in spite of that, I have been able to learn how to listen, how to speak, read, write, and be part of mainstream society. So now, teaching a hearing impaired child is a very complex process. And when you are teaching a hearing impaired child, you are not only teaching them what is sound. You're teaching them so many things that come into making the sound happen in the first place. I would like to uh, demonstrate in, a, in the form of an example how we teach here in Pajir. And uh, Mr. Kati can you just come up for a moment, please? Um, 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 I'm going to say that I'm Mr. Kati Kane's father and he's my son. Okay, he's very young, so he's young enough to be my son. Now, supposing he does hearing problem, what do I do as a father is, if I want to teach him how to pronounce the letter K, I just simply look at him and I say K. And he will repeat himself, he will try and mimic me. When you are about one year, when you are about two years old, you are basically trying to mimic your father and your mother and the sound that come around us. So he is, so I will say K and he will repeat K, I say K again, till he perfects the art of saying the letter K. But when you come to a hearing impaired child, in the first place, the hearing impaired child cannot hear the word K because they don't have hearing in the first place. Now, when you look at me, you don't realize that I'm, a, that I'm a hearing impaired person because you cannot see it. It is an invisible disability. Please remember that. So, let's imagine he is my son again. And uh, he is hearing impaired. I want to teach him how to speak the letter K. Now, if I uh, make him wear hearing aids, now hearing aids is just the first step. It is just a means of amplifying the sound so that I can hear it in the first place. But he will not be able to understand the sounds that are coming into his ears. Because it can be A, B, C, it can be the door slamming, it can be the aeroplane, it can be anything. But according to him, it is just noise. So how do I teach him? I, uh, please make a fist of your hand, just one hand. And when we, I would like all of you to make a fist of your hand, please. And uh, what I do is, I put the hand against my throat. And I say, K. What do you feel? You feel a click. You feel vibrations. Then after that, I put it in front of my mouth. And I say, K. You feel a certain burst of air. Then after that, I put it against my sonar plexus or my stomach. And I say, K. You feel a little bit of the contraction of muscles. Then, after I have done it a few times, then I put it back on his throat and I ask him to repeat it. He, he, so that, that way, he am able to give him an overall perspective of what is the sound K. Then he can uh, understand that. Then I will be taking it and I will make him pronounce. He will make mistakes in the first place, then I will put it back. And he put it back on him and then put it back and so forth until he perfects the art of saying the letter K. I want to give you another example how to pronounce the letter S for super. Now, again, when you say S, you are saying S. 
You feel the vibration is longer. When you put it in front of a mouth, you say, yes, the air is very steady and very smooth. When you put it again to your stomach, you don't feel anything. So then you get to understand the difference between the letter K and S. Okay. Another letter which I would like to talk about is H for hello. H. So I say H. It is very deep and very short compared to S. Then I put it again in my mouth and I say H. It's a sudden burst of air which is different from S. Okay. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Now, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you so much. Now, for a long time, I had a lot of difficulty in pronouncing the letter S and H. Because for me, uh, it is a lot more complex to pronounce it perfectly. So my father uh, and my mother, they came up with the concept of trying to use a piece of imagination and creativity to took me how to pronounce it. So they made a, they took a candle. On the candle, uh, the, the fire, what you say, the fire was on. So I was, they put the candle in front of me and they were asking me to say the letter S. So when you say S, the fire should not go off, but it will be leaning a little bit to 45 degrees angle. But if you lean for about one or two seconds and then come up. But when I pronounce the letter H, if you lean suddenly back and come up again. But the main thing is the night it should not go off. So once I perfected the uh, they put it in front of me, I perfected pronouncing the letter S. Then after good in that then I started pronouncing the letter H. After I became good in that, then I started alternating between them. S, H, S, H. So, why I'm telling you all these things is because I would like you to understand one thing. That hearing impaired children can learn how to listen. The most important thing is that you need proper early intervention in the formative years. From the, from the time they are born, to the time they are five to six years old, all of your parents have been parents of some point of time or been children. I'm sure we understand the children in the first five years of their lives are like soft pieces of clay. It is easy to mold a mindset. It is easy to make them understand how to pronounce. And the minds are like a sponge which is choking all the knowledge that you transfer to them. So the crucial period is the first five years if you are able to give a great foundation I'm telling you, children like me, like the, uh, the two girls who are going to speak, then so many hearing impaired children will be able to learn how to listen, how to speak, and be part of mainstream society. And I want to give you one or two small stories. When my father was, uh, when I'm, sorry, when I'm, uh, oh, sorry, when I was about, uh, maybe about um, six to seven years old, I was in school, I was in a mainstream school. And my mother used to come and pick me up after school hour in order to take me for my speech therapy, my language therapy. Now, I was a pretty good student, very well behaved. I had no choice because my father was a policeman, so I had to be very disciplined, very proper, all that. And I was very scared of my father. So I knew that if I made a mistake, then he uh, punished me. So... My mother came to school and she saw me standing outside the classroom. She was very surprised because she had never seen me standing outside the classroom. So she came into the class and she asked the teacher, Why is my son standing outside? What happened? The teacher said that my son, that your son was talking too much in class. <laughs> now that is something my mother uh, was actually very happy. That I was being punished for talking too much because. <laughs> and, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to. Um, I have got so many more stories, and, but I've got a very limited time. But uh, what, what I would like to tell you is that hearing impaired children 
want to get the proper opportunity to learn how to listen to speak in the formative years, you have no idea of how these people can go on to do so well enough. I can give you some example. I know a boy. He has done his master's in science from the University of Florida. He worked for one year, but then and he had profound hearing loss, but then he decided he wanted to be his own boss. He came back to India, started his own IT company, and uh, that company has been one of, one of the top 10 CRM tools of 2014. And now he uh, started a second startup, IT company, and he says he wants to be bothered by Flipkart at some point of time. He had the dream, and there is a boy called Pratik. Pratik, he is a, he's a young man, he is a young man with, uh, sorry, he is a young man with profound hearing loss. But when you see him, you don't realize it. He is so confident, look at him, he has the confident, the assurance about himself. He has got a mission into the MBA in University of Delhi in South Campus, in the prestigious university. And uh, the girls are going to talk about him. So I wanna, um, I'm going to conclude my speech now. I would like to thank all of you for listening and I hope that when all of you go outside the door, that all of you can go and tell others in the public that you heard a hearing impaired child speak. And more and more hearing impaired children can learn how to listen. Thank you so much. Nothing is impossible.